Hello and welcome everybody. This is the September uh, Pressbooks product update. I'm Steel Wagstaff, the Pressbooks product manager, and there's a lot of new features and new things that we want to show you that we're quite excited about that our development team has worked hard on. So I'm going to jump into the demo portion. And the first thing that I want to show you is related to a set of new features related to contributors. So what you're seeing is a very bare dashboard for a user who's just logged in to Pressbooks for the first time. There's a couple of things you'll notice. You'll notice if the user doesn't have any books, we're displaying a new set of messages for them. We're saying, you don't have access to any books, and then we're giving them two options. They can create a book, and now they can actually clone a book as their first action. So previously, new users weren't able to clone books until they had been added to books. Now we've changed the cloning routine so that you can clone a book as your first action. And you'll notice up here now, clone a book is now available. And, and the first thing that we would recommend that a person do <coughs> might be to edit or enhance their profile. So we've, we've done a little bit of an overhaul of the user profile page, and this will be related to contributors as you'll see in a second. So this is a fake user named Rick Sanchez. So I'm gonna give Rick a first and last name. And then I might say, let's display my name as Rick Sanchez. The email address is inherited from your login, but you can change it. Now, Rick has a website, it's, Pressbooks.org, so we're going to list that. Rick also uses Twitter uh, at twitter.com. Rick also uses LinkedIn and wants to connect their LinkedIn profile. And Rick uses GitHub. So all of these things can be listed now as part of Rick's identity. So I'm just putting some basic URLs. These four fields have to be valid URLs or they won't save. But then we have the new field that says institution. So you can describe your institutional affiliation. So Rick is from the University of California, uh, Santa Cruz. And then you can also create a bio. So you say Rick is a proud father of two dogs and loves jogging, learning about open education and uh, studying psychology. He has been a contributor to several open textbooks over the past few years. All right, so Rick has a bio now. And then we're going to click update profile. So this is something that you may have already done, but you'll notice now that we have these new fields in the bio. There's an institution, a bio info, and some of these social links. So Rick now is displayed as Rick Sanchez. And the first thing that Rick is gonna do is create a new book. So when Rick creates his first book, so we'll call this first book, his book will be created. And in this book, there will automatically be a contributor and the contributor will be Rick because Rick created the book. And what we're gonna do is when we create the contributor, we're now gonna create and pull in all of the information that Rick has used in his profile. So here you'll notice that this book has a contributor and we've overhauled and changed the contributors page considerably. So you'll see all of that same information that you could enter for user profile is now also possible from the contributor page. Here's the information we entered for Rick before. So I can come to Rick and I can say, okay, here's Rick, here's his prefix, there's his, his name. You can upload a profile picture, which I haven't done yet. So I'll show you how we could do that. So I'm gonna upload a profile picture. So here's the picture when I click done, the image needs to be a square and it needs to be 400 by 400 pixels. So there'll be a little interface that lets me crop the picture. That's the part of Rick that I really want to show people just his face. And we'll say crop image. Rick now has a profile picture and I might want to change the bio and add a new sentence. So he was invited to join this textbook by his professor, Dr. Fake Person. So Rick now has a contributor bio and an image and all that stuff. So we have a book, we have the first contributor. The other thing that I might wanna do is I might wanna collaborate on this book with someone else. So I'm gonna add somebody to the book. All right, so here's Steel. I'm gonna add Steel to the book. When I add a new user, we will also create a contributor for that person. And I'm gonna add Amy. And Amy, you'll notice there are some roles here. You can add them as an administrator, an editor, an author. We changed the name of this role. It used to be contributor. We're now calling it collaborator so that it's less confusing with the contributor feature. 
So the permissions haven't changed. The old contributor role is now called collaborator. So that's a change we made. In this case, I'm gonna add Amy as a subscriber. Because she's added as a subscriber, when I look at my user list, you'll see there's Amy, who's a subscriber, Rick, who's an administrator, Steele, who's an administrator. So this book should have two contributors, Rick and Steele. Amy will not be created as a contributor to the book because her subscriber role doesn't give her any write permissions. It would be impossible for her to make a contribution. So we'll look at contributors and you'll see, just like we created Rick, oh, actually I did create Amy on accident, but uh, I was gonna show you something different. So this is Steele and Rick, uh, let me delete Amy. And Steele's information has been pulled in from his bio as well. So the next thing that I'll do is I'll come to user and I'll change Amy's permissions in the role. I'll make her an editor on this book. And when I make her an editor, we'll also create a contributor for her. And we'll include the information that she had entered for her profile. So that's the beginning thing where you can add users. And if a user has profile information, it will automatically be pulled into their contributor. Once it's been done, those are disconnected. We don't sync or update information. So if you change your profile later, it won't automatically be changed in your contributor, except for one field. If you change your name, we will change it for any contributor that's associated with you. Otherwise, they become separate. So you can have a different contributor bio in one book from the second book, even though you're based on the same user profile. Hope that's not too confusing. So the next thing that I want to do is uh, I want to actually show you how we would edit a contributor or create a new one. So here's a case where I want to work with someone on this book that isn't actually a user in the book, or I want to give them credit. So maybe the person's deceased. So I'm doing the plays of William Shakespeare. So let's say William Shakespeare uh, is the person's name. And the, the first name is William, last name is Shakespeare. Well, we're happy, we want to do the plays of William Shakespeare the uh, third. They're not as well known, of course, as the father. So I'm going to add a suffix and I can add the name. And in, in fact, it was Reverend William Shakespeare the third. So I'll add a prefix there that's Reverend William Shakespeare the third. And we'll add a profile picture for this person. Um, and we'll really crop that one tight. That's going to be terrifying. Uh, and then the bio, William Shakespeare the third is the lesser known grandson of the English playwright. But okay, institution, uh, fake university, website, uh, there we go. And we've created a new contributor for this book. So now I have a few people that I can give credit for in my book. Um, another thing we may want to do is actually go and get contributors from a different book. So here's a book that I've already made that has a bunch of people in it. And I want to bring these people into my book and give them credit without having to go through the tedious process of creating them. So I can now do a bulk export and bulk import of my contributors. So here are the people that I wanna bring in. I'm gonna say bulk action. Let's download what's called the JSON file. So I've just downloaded all the contributor information for those people. I come back to my original book and instead of creating a new contributor, I'm gonna pick this file and I'm gonna import it. And you'll notice now that when it's done, Amy has been updated with this new contributor information. We've got all of these other people from that other book that are now ready for me to use as a feature in this book. So the first thing is, as you're starting to work with this feature, you will want to think about creating and adding profile information and also creating and enhancing your existing contributors. Right now in your books, your contributor will really only have a name. That was the only field we supported previously. So before you turn this feature on and start displaying them, you'll want to begin adding the other metadata for contributors if you want it. So that it would include a profile picture, an institution, a bio, a website, and any social links that you want like to add. There are instructions. We've published a guide chapter here that explain how to do all the things that I just explained. So this is a new chapter in our guide. I will drop the link in the chat. That was how we would kind of create the contributors for a book. The next thing is choosing to display them. So if I am in a book, if I'm in my first book, what I may want to do is take a chapter and give somebody credit as the author. So this chapter was written by Donkey Watermelon and uh, Reverend William Shakespeare III. So chapter one, I 
given them credit as authors. The introduction to my book, I'll come back and I'll say the introduction here. This one, the introduction in this book was written by Amy Song. Thank you, Amy, for writing that. And then if I go to my back matter, I have an appendix. And the appendix, let's say the appendix was written by uh, Dr. Fake Person III. Um, Morty Morderson helped out. And so did uh, Steele. I helped on that one. So we've assigned multiple authors to some of these parts, front matter, chapter. The other thing that you can do uh, is decide to display your about the author information uh, in the at the end of each of one of your chapters. So to do that, you'll come into appearance and click theme options. You will see a new theme option that says about the author. You can choose to display information about the authors at the end of each chapter. So if I turn that theme option on for this book, what you should see is when I go to view my chapter, I visit my book and view my introduction. The author of this chapter is Amy Song. So there's now a section here that says about the author. It shows the bio, it shows her name, her institution, the link, any social links, and then her bio. If I look at chapter one, at the bottom of this chapter, here's Donkey Watermelon, here's Reverend William Shakespeare, and we're displaying the information about this person. And then in appendix, there's three, so here's fake person the third, here's Morty, and here's Steele. So we'll display the information that you've requested. It'll be at the back of each chapter and it will also be included in the exports. You can turn that feature on and off by toggling that theme setting and that will display it for the book. The other place that you will use kind of the idea of contributors is actually in your book info. And this is where you assign people roles in the book entire. So the author of this book, as we know, was Rick Sanchez. This book had an editor. It was Dr. Peter Brzezinski, the fourth. The book had a translator. It was uh, Friendly Human. Uh, and it had two reviewers, Donkey Watermelon and, uh, let's see, the, I was the other reviewer. There was an illustrator. It was Cedar Stillman Wolves and um, a bunch of contributors. So let's just add a bunch of other people as contributors here. So this is where you'd give people credit for contributing to your book as a whole. This is what I would do for my metadata, but you can now display this information automatically in the back matter of your book. And to do that, you come in to organize and we're gonna add a new back matter type. So we come in and say back matter, and you'll notice here there's a new back matter type that says contributors. Create a back matter type of contributors and call it uh, whatever you wanna call it. So people who made the book, I don't know what we wanna say there. And if you leave it blank, this is what will happen. It'll give you a message that says, to display the list of contributors, leave this back matter content blank. If you leave it blank, we have a rule that will go in and find all the book info and display a similar kind of layout to what we do at the end of the chapter. So it'll start by saying, the editor of this book was Dr. Peter Brzezinski, displays the editor first, then it will display any authors for the book, then contributors, if there's multiple, it will display all of them. So there's a lot of contributors. And then it will show the translator, and then it will show the reviewers, and finally the illustrator or illustrators. So it just displays all those people, their full bio and other information just in order as part of the back matter. If you don't like that and you wanna replace it and create your own, you can simply type some content in here and say override, <laughs> and it will display the word override instead of that back matter. Those are the two big features, which are how to create contributors, add information, and display them at the end of chapters or uh, for your book entire. Great question. So in the chat, Lorene said, what about ORCID ID implementation? So this is a feature that's on our wish list. What we would like to do next is, if you're not familiar with ORCID ID, ORCID ID is a kind of canonical way to reference a person. It's like, it's kind of like a DOI, but for people. So what we're gonna to try to do is with a user's profile or the contributor, there'll be a button that says authenticate via ORCID. We'll connect with the ORCID ID API. If they connect their ORCID identity, we will then associate it with that contributor or that user's profile. Um, we weren't able to build it for this first feature release, but it's on our back, backlog and we'd like to build that in the near future. Uh, and then Allison asked, what does it look like if there's no photo? Yeah, 
So if there's no photo, it doesn't show. So let me show you um, the back matter. But what happens is when you remove the image, what you're gonna see is we don't use the placeholder, we just display the information left aligned there without the bio. So if you don't wanna include profile pictures for all or some people, it will just display in line. Now there was a question also about what does this look like in exports? So let me go and show you, uh, here's a book that's a bit more filled out. So I'll make the export from this book. I'm gonna make a PDF export for digital distribution just cause that's the easiest one to show. So this feature is turned on. I've got a bunch of contributors. I've got front matter, back matter, et cetera. And now if you look at the PDF export, here's what you'll see. This is using the McLuhan theme. Each theme will display it in its own style, but, and you'll see at the end of the introduction, here's the introduction, here's the content. And then there's about the author section and it displays the information. Instead of showing the social links, we replace them with the actual content of the link because having an icon isn't, as, isn't very helpful in a PDF export. So that's what we're doing there. Uh, the preface had some authors, so we're displaying those here. Here's chapter one. I'm going to, scrolling too fast, so sorry about that. That's what about the authors look like there. And then if I go all the way down to the bottom, here's what the back matter looks like. Editors, there's the editors of this book author, contributors, and so forth. So it'll be styled according to the theme style that you choose, but those should display and look, I think generally pretty good by default. So that's the big new feature that we're pretty excited about. We know that people have wanted to more easily display information about the humans who made the Pressbooks books. And so we wanted to facilitate that and make that possible. We have some kind of improvements and enhancements coming later. One of them was the one mentioned by Lorene with Orchid ID. And we'd also like to start displaying some more information about contributors on the book's homepage itself, um, maybe their faces and a place to find more information about them if it's present. So um, that's the contributor feature. I can take any more questions about contributors before I move on and show you some other things. We also changed or improved our instructions on the cloning routine slightly. This is a pretty minor change, but let me just show you. At the top, we explain what the cloning tool is. We link to the guide about cloning. And we also tell you, if you want to find a book for cloning, check out the Pressbooks directory. I know most of you know about the Pressbooks directory. If you don't, it's a free resource that shows you thousands of openly licensed books published across many different Pressbooks networks. So you can go here and say, okay, I want to see all the CCBY books. And you could find a book that you could clone from this list really easily. You'll also notice if you go to the publish or the organize menu for your book, we made a small tweak here for organize. When you make a book public, we just clarified what that means. Your book can be seen by anyone and that a public book could be less listed in the Pressbooks directory. Um, as I said before, we changed the role of contributor, the role, book role, the name of it to collaborator. We also did a few things here in the, in the book interface. So here's a book that has multiple authors assigned. For the first time now in the book table of contents, we're gonna show you the names of the authors for each part and chapter in the book table of contents. So Dalsin, who's on the call made this change. Uh, people have been asking for it for a while. So instead of just showing you the chapter title, you'll also see the author's name displayed underneath the title. And you'll also see it if you come to the reading interface. So we've improved the table of contents. We already were doing that for the exports, we just weren't doing it in the web book. So now we've chosen to do it in the web book. Um, you'll notice also that we're using semicolons to separate authors' names because there are times when an author's name will have a comma inside of it, like if it's Ken Griffey, comma, junior. So we want to make sure that the list is disambiguated a bit better. That's kind of a minor. Another change that we made was every book has what's called an H5P listing page. It's kind of a hidden resource, but if you visit this URL for a book that has H5P activities in it, we will display what's called an H5P activities list. We've changed the interface here so that it's paginated now. So these pages will load a bit faster and a bit better. We'll show 20 at a time and you can expand them all and see your activities or hide them all. This book has 28, so I'm seeing 20 at a time. And then if I wanna see the remaining ones, I can go to the second page. So these pages will load much faster. The, the feature expand and contract work just works a little bit better. So that's a nice feature if you wanna see what's happening in H5P with a given book before you clone it. This is an improvement we made there. Uh, another minor change is um, in, you'll notice on the book, book itself or the book homepage itself, 
there are these automatic menu elements that get created or added. Previously, we weren't adding IDs to them, so they couldn't be targeted reliably with CSS. Now we are. So for example, this link here, if you look at the link, the list ID, it has an ID and then there is a class and the class now includes the name of that element. Um, and then there are a couple of smaller bugs that we fixed. There was a bug that was happening um, in books that had footnotes and collapsible sections. This is a chapter that has the collapsible sections turned on. Previously, when there was a collapse section and you were using media attributions and footnotes, those would be included in the final collapse section on accident. So they weren't visible unless you expanded the collapse section. So we fixed that bug so that now the collapse section will close. Media attributions will be visible and placed at the end of the chapter as expected. Footnotes will be visible placed at the end of the chapter and so will about the authors. Those will never be accidentally hidden inside of a collapse section. So that was a bug that we fixed. Uh, it'll be fixed for your web books if that feature is turned on. And another bug that was affecting people had to do with when you had centered images, we had accidentally insert, in, in, in create, inserted a rule that says, when you center an image, we were resizing it to be a maximum of 50% of the page width in the PDF exports. And some people were saying, why is the image so small? And it was because we had uh, put a rule in there. So now centered images will be the right size in PDF exports. They won't be automatically maxed out at 50% of the page width. Um, and last but not least, this is a change that's available only for the Pressbooks clients. This is not an open source feature, but Pressbooks clients will know that they have a book list. Um, and this book list lets you look at all of the books on your network and filter them and sort them and see information about your publishing program. So we've added a new field here to the book list that's called book admins. And this will just show you the email address of everybody who is an administrator in a given book. So we knew that this was a feature request that came from people like eCampus Ontario. They wanted to know at a glance because they, they're supporting many different schools. They want to get a list of their books and know how many of these are being were created by people from, uh, I don't know, OCAD University versus the University of Toronto. And so now when you download this CSV, you'll have all of your books, the URL, and you'll have a field that shows the email address of your book administrator so you can filter and sort by it kind of helps you filter and sort by institution a little bit better. So that's a new feature and that should be valuable to network managers who want to see this all in one screen or one field. So that was another change that we added and released. Okay, I see in the chat, um, is there an easy way for someone to get from the H5P activity list to see where in the book the H5P activity exists? But the answer to that right now is no, there's not an easy way. It would be nice to know where the activity was embedded, and we're thinking about that, but we don't have a good way to do it yet. That would be a great feature. Thank you for suggesting that, Lauren. And for um, that concludes the demo portion of the, the meeting today. Those are the big new features. That's what we're really excited to show. We hope that you enjoy and appreciate these features, and we always love to hear feedback from you about what you want to see or what you think we should have done or how we can improve what we're already doing. Thank you for attending this. and, and uh, Hope to see you next month.